Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to our third, I think, video. In this video, I'm going to discuss one of the problems that we didn't get a chance to discuss during class last week. Hopefully, this will be useful for studying for the midterm exam. What I'm trying to do with this question is come up with a question that is harder than the questions that are going to be on the exam. The idea is to give you some practice so that you can get used to this level of question and the ones on the exam will be easier for you to answer. So the thing that makes this question hard is that there are three different options in the utility function and that we are specifying a range of probabilities. So we're not dealing with just picking probabilities out of our head, we're dealing with a range of probabilities and we've got three different options. So you wouldn't have to deal with all of this in an exam question. I'm not going to do that to you. Instead, you'll probably only have to deal with ones that are maybe two options and without a range of probabilities. I'll probably just give you probabilities. I mean, I'll probably do that. I don't know with what probability I'm going to do that, but you know what I mean. So let's do a hard one. And hopefully by the end of doing this hard one, you'll be like, oh, now the exam doesn't seem as scary. So. This is the question. This is the problem. We've got three different options. Those are the rows of this table. So we've got alpha, we've got beta, and we've got, I think that one's gamma, but it looks like a Y. And what we're asking is each of these is a risky lottery. So if we pick lottery alpha, uh, we get a payoff of 15 with probability P and a payoff of 90 with probability 1 minus P. So whatever P is, so if this was like a coin flip, for example, P would be 50 and 1 minus P would also be 50. Lottery beta gives us 35 with probability P and 75 with probability 1 minus P and gamma gives us 55 or 40. So let's take a moment here to think about what's actually happening. We've got three different lotteries. The first one gives us a really low payoff uh, with probability P and a really high payoff with the inverse of P. Beta is a bit more balanced. It gives us a slightly higher payoff for P and a slightly lower payoff for 1 minus P and gamma is the most balanced of all. It actually gives us a higher payoff uh, with probability P and a lower payoff with probability 1 minus P. And the question we're facing is for what range of values of P is alpha optimal? So you could tackle this question without doing any maths by thinking about like okay well if if P is zero, for example, then alpha is definitely the best lottery because with probability zero you'll get 15 and with probability 100 you'll get 90. So if P is zero and you're choosing between alpha, beta and gamma, you would always pick alpha. Hopefully that makes sense. What we want to know is, well what about if P is, you know, 0 0.001? What about 0.002? So you could plug those values in and just work out for every possible value of P <coughs> um, what's the best lottery. So if P is 0.5, then what's the expected utility of alpha? What's the expected utility of beta? What's the expected utility of gamma? Etc. 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 But there is actually a quicker way to do it, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So what we do is we put P into the equation and we solve for a value of p such that alpha and beta are equal. Then we're going to do the same thing for alpha and gamma, and then we're going to do the same thing for beta and gamma. And by setting the two lotteries uh, as like, um, uh, uh, what, as by solving for the value of p at which they generate equal expected utilities, then we can figure out, okay, so if P is anything above that level, then alpha is going to be better. If P is anything below that level, um, gamma is going to be better. So let's do the first step, which is comparing alpha uh, to gamma. So for any given value of P, alpha is going to give you P times 15 plus 1 minus P times 90. And what we want to know is for what value of P does that expected utility shake out as being equal to the expected utility of gamma. <clears throat> and so that's what the first line is doing. P15 plus 1 minus P times 90 has to be equal to 55P plus 1 minus P times 40. Once you multiply that out, uh, 
you can solve for the value of p and it comes to 50 over 90. So when p is greater than 50 over 90, alpha is a better lottery than gamma, and when p is less than that, gamma is a better lottery than alpha. Then we do the same thing for beta and gamma, uh, and we find when that when p is less than 35 over 55, beta is better than gamma. And then we can do the same thing for um, alpha and gamma, and this is the answer to the question. When p is between 0 and 0.429, alpha is the best lottery. When p is between 0.429 and 0.636, beta is the best lottery. And when p is greater than 0.636, gamma is the best lottery. So, what I would advise you to do is to look at the PowerPoint, which is on Google Classroom, and go through each step of this question. I would also say, this is a graduate textbook level question, and it's not the type of question that's going to be on the exam. But if you walk through this one, and you make sure that you can follow every step of the maths that's on this PowerPoint, then you'll be in a good position to answer a question on the midterm, which might say, like, um, th these are two options. If P is this level, then, like, um, what's the best lottery? So hopefully this gives you a sense um, of, like, how we can make decisions over risky lotteries. And next week, uh, as we start to talk about the nuclear apocalypse, assessing risks this way is going to be really useful. So, sorry for a really long video that had lots of maths in it. Um, Ellie and Ollie, anything you want to add? Well, that was not a particularly helpful addition, but there we go. Thanks for watching, and cheerio.